Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today here at Grace Community Assembly of God. We are so glad that you are with us, whether you're joining us for the first time, whether you've been watching us online for a long time. Thank you for for choosing today to worship with us. Hey, do me a quick favor. Go and like this video and subscribe to our channel. That way you will get to know more about who Grace is and what we're all about. So be sure you do that real quick. Um, Devin, is there anything that you would like to say at the moment? Uh, well, we had a great weekend this last week with our men's and women's ministry kickoff for the fall. Uh, had a great turnout and did lots of cool things, had some fun fun activities for the guys. I know the girls had a good time and we gave away some new Grace t-shirts and you, those yes. are awesome. He's, he's wearing one right yeah. now. Look at this beauty. Hey, if you want one, you can get one. The cost is only $5, so be sure you're picking that up. Uh, we have lots of shirts in stock currently, and we also have some more on the way, so be sure to get your Grace t-shirt. It's just stronger together. Yes, that was our theme during our, our women's and men's kickoff, but yet I feel like that's pretty much our, our theme for the entire year because we truly are stronger together when we get to live life together, when we get to study the Bible together, when we get to worship God together, there's just something about that. There really is. It's a special thing because not only does it bring us closer to God, but it sharpens our relationship with Him. And the Bible talks about how iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. And so it's a really cool thing, and we can accomplish much more together than we ever could on our own. Yeah, and I feel like at our men's and women's kickoff, we did just that. We got we to learn and, and grow together. There's going to be some amazing activities coming up in the future, so be sure you're plugging in with our men's and women's department. Also, if you were, are a lady and you didn't quite get to make it to that women's ministry meeting, go back and watch it on YouTube. We posted that, I think, on like Wednesday. So go back and rewatch that. I think you're gonna be glad you did. There you go, absolutely. And uh, by the way, with these t-shirts, if you don't know where they are, they are out in the Connection Center, just to the left of the doors going out of the building if you're facing that direction. Yeah, so, so get yours today. Uh, you can uh, purchase it online on our giving tab you could drop your money off in the offering however you want to pay um, but hey we just want you to wear the shirt wear it around town wear it to target wear it to walmart and it's it's nice little advertising wherever you go so yes it really is it's pretty cool um also christmas is coming up i know yes. we haven't even passed halloween yet and i'm sorry for even mentioning <laughs> christmas but hey it's never too early. Christmas yes it's early. never too early and many of you know, we, we do pack up these stockings for Dallas Metro. Devin, can you tell us a little bit more about the stocking drive we have coming up? Yeah, so it's a really cool event because it helps uh, bless uh, boys and girls who may not have much on Christmas otherwise. And it helps our uh, men and women at the Teen Life Challenge uh, areas as well. And so we do this as just a way to bless them. And so we have stockings that are going to be available in our Connection Center. Uh, after the service this Sunday, or well, today, actually, today is this Sunday. <laughs> yes, and so, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. So be sure to grab those on your way out. If you would like to take some to pack up for us and help us with that, that would be an awesome thing, and you're helping bless the life of someone else. Yes, absolutely. We've been doing this for numerous amounts of years. I really don't know how many. I've been here seven years now, and they've been doing it longer than yeah. that. So it's a very important part of what we do. And more than anything, it does make a difference in someone else's life around Christmas time. So thank you for playing your part. We also have some new classes starting up this Wednesday, Devin. Yes. Are you excited? I'm pumped about it. It's going to be great. So October 19th, 7 p.m., join us for some very new classes. We actually have a short promo video I want to show you at this time. So check this out. My name is Terry North, and we are going to take a journey through 1st and 2nd Peter. Peter was the unofficial leader of the apostles. Every time the names of the apostles are listed in the Gospels, Peter's name was mentioned first. Peter was part of the inner circle with James and John. When Peter met Jesus, his name was Simon. But Jesus changed his name to Peter, which means rock. And Jesus told Peter in Matthew 16, 18, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is the cornerstone. Peter is the rock upon which Jesus built his church. Hopefully, we will have a fun, fun time addressing this study. Thank you. 
Hello, Grace. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Andre. Beginning October 19th, I'll be leading an eight-week study in the book of Hebrews. During the class, we'll talk about the supremacy of Christ. Not only that, but the whys behind it. Why is Jesus superior to angels, to Moses, to Abraham? We'll also talk about some of the exhortations from Jesus. We'll go into some promises as well. And when we get into chapter 11, the heroes of faith, we're going to make that personal. We might even shed a tear or two. Blessings, Grace. Hope to see you there. Hey there, Grace. I'm Pastor Devin. My class will be starting a series called You and Me Forever, Marriage in Light of Eternity by Francis and Lisa Chan. In this series, we will take a look at what Scripture says to understand how we should view our most important earthly relationship. Marriage is all about focus. So often we focus too much on marriage that we forget to focus on God, making Him the centerpiece. So I have a question for all of us in the house tonight, whether you are joining us online, whether you're in person, how is life treating you? That's a good question. It is, yeah. And we may we may get a, a gamut of answers on that with the way that things are in the world right now. But, uh, you know, we serve a God who's bigger than anything that we could ever face. And even if you're struggling right now in life, or even, even if you're on the mountaintop, God is still there and he's still big and he's still an awesome guy. Yeah, so you asked, why am I even asking this question? Most of the time when we ask that question, we get like a, a one or two word answer. Yeah, yeah, life is good, life is good. It's going fine. But today's message will actually be dealing with how life is treating you and how we can le learn to live an abundant life. So be sure you're watching till the all, all the way to the end to find out more information on how life is treating you what we can do with how life is treating us. Yes. It's going to be a powerful, powerful uh, sermon today. I'm looking forward to that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so Candy Palooza is our fall event that's coming up here in a month on Sunday, October 30th. I like candy. Oh, dude, I do too. Well, who doesn't like candy? Candy's awesome. Yeah. And so speaking of candy, we are needing chocolate candy. We have lots of the, the fruit type candy, and so we got all that we need right there, but we just need a little bit more chocolate to help supplement that stash of candy for this uh, event. So we're going to be using that during our trunk or treat as well. And if you would like to help us decorate your car for trunk or treat, there's a, a, a volunteer form on the front page of our website. You'll scroll down just a little bit there, fmgrace.org. You'll be able to see that. You can click on that, fill out yeah. that quick form and let us know if you want to help us with our trunk or treat. Yeah, so it'll be that big picture when you're on the front page of our website. Candy Palooza. Yeah, there's going to be some little text. You just click on that text, and you can actually sign up that way. Yeah. And so in case you were wondering, you say, hey, I went to the site. I couldn't find it. Well, just click on the text, and you'll be fine. But I'm excited for Candy Palooza. One, it gives you an opportunity to dress up as one character. Yeah. Whether you're being Pokemon or your favorite wrestler from the WWE. Superhero, or, Marvel. Yeah, absolutely. You know. It gives you an amazing opportunity to dress up and to put a smile on a kid's face. Also gives our, our kids the opportunity to, to get a lot of candy. But I think what I like most about it is it gives us the opportunity to invite others to church. Yes, absolutely. This event is for your kids, but it's also for the kids that are friends of your kid. Yes. If I said that properly. <laughs> <laughs> so your kids are going to be well encouraged to invite a friend on that day to come and you know hear the gospel as well but also to to participate in this very fun event and there's also going to be a 40 foot obstacle course inflatable back there with us as well so just throwing that out there yeah i might have to jump on that oh yeah it's yeah for the adults are gonna i think enjoy it just as much as the kids maybe even more than yeah. the kids i believe yeah that. I believe so that. here's something also special that we're gonna be doing on that day uh so we want you to wear these this stronger shirt. together shirts this right shirt. here so you've got the next couple of weeks right here today and next week to get your shirt and then on the 30th at Kenny Palooza Day we want you guys to wear those shirts wear them proud and then we're going to have a, a photo backdrop with a banner that yeah. even has the words stronger oh, together, together with, with our, logo our church too. logo yes and so we're going to be encouraging you guys to take pictures in Post front of that, that on as well. social media yes. we're going to be giving you a hashtag so when you go to Instagram or Facebook you just apply the hashtag so that they're all grouped they're all in together. together yeah and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that's going to be a really cool day. Well, service is about to start, so we need to get out of here. But you stick around and join us for the entire service. I think you're going to be glad that you did. Yes, absolutely. You guys enjoy it. Have a blessed week. Take care. Bye-bye.
Good morning, Grace. Would you stand to your feet? Are you ready to testify of the Lord's goodness in your life this morning? He has been so good. He has been so faithful. Yes. And I believe the greater things are to come. Amen. Amen. Darkness run for cover, but the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders, I have resurrection power, still the miracle testimony from death to life cause grace we wrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'll justify this is my testimony this is my testimony sons and daughters but with blood and washed in water sing the praises of the spirit son and father our god will finish what he started yes he will yes our god will finish what he started this is my testimony from death to life Greater things still to come. Oh, I believe. I'm not dead. I'm not dying. No. Greater things still to come. Oh, I believe. I'm not dead. You're not dying. Yeah. Greater things still to come. Oh, I believe. I'm not dead. You're not dying. From death to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony. From death to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. This is my testimony. Come on, can we lift up our praise to him this morning? Come to our God. you father we trust you Jesus come on let's sing this together who takes our brokenness who takes our brokenness and makes us whole again who turns the darkness into light only Jesus
face I see my pain no more my fear is cease I bow my life I fix my eyes on Christ my King I bow my life I fix my eyes on Christ my King oh, we fix our have a name. His name is Jesus. Just say his name. Jesus. 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 Aren't you glad to know that our help comes from the Lord? He is our source. Our hope does not rest in this world. Our hope does not rest in our government. Our hope does not rest in anything that this world has to offer. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to have our prayer, prayer partners come on down. Pastor Dustin, could you bring the phone? There's a passage of scripture I want to share with you guys. I got up here without this. But prayer team, y'all go ahead and come down. Psalm chapter 62, verses 5 and 6 says, Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, for I will not be shaken. The church, I don't know what kind of struggle you may be going through this morning, but we serve a God who's victorious. No matter what we go through, no matter what challenge may come our way, He is victorious, and He has our hope. Our hope rests in Him. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to pray a prayer. And as I'm praying, I want you guys, if you have a need this morning, don't miss out on this opportunity to come and, and, and encounter God and be prayed over. These prayer partners, they're down here for you guys. And so come. And as I, as I pray, we're going to remain in this attitude of prayer and worship. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes. And if you have a need, come on down. Father God, we love you so much. Lord, we are so thankful, Lord, for your blessings, God. And we're so thankful, Lord, that our hope is found in you, God. That it's not found in anything else, Lord Jesus. Lord, because you are the author and perfecter of our faith, Lord Jesus. And God, I just pray that you would just meet the needs that are here in this, in this house this morning, God. Lord, as we come forward, Father, I pray, God, that just your spirit would move. Lord, that your presence would move in this place, God, that we would just feel you in a way like never before, God. Lord, we just pray, God, that you would just be with, with financial needs, Lord Jesus. Lord, whatever these needs may be, God, you see each and every single one of them, Father. And Lord, we just pray that you would provide in real and powerful ways. God, we pray for marriages, God. Lord, if there's marriages in this room, God, that are struggling this morning, God, I pray, God, that you would just mend things that may be torn, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you would just move in mighty ways in families, God. I pray, God, that you would just bring restoration, Lord. Lord, there are people in this house, God, that need healing, Lord Jesus, from illness and sickness, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you would just move in those needs, God. Lord, you are our hope, God. You are our source, Lord, and we are just believing and trusting you, God, for lives to be healed and lives to be changed, Lord Jesus, and, and miracles to happen, God. We thank you so much, God, for all that you do, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you would just continue to move in this service, God. Let your will be done. I pray, God, that you open up our hearts, God, to receive from you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, Christ, be praised. I have victory. Oh, Christ, be praised. I have victory. Sing it out. 
From the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt. Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope And thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white Thank you, Jesus, you have saved
darkness Oh, you brought me from the darkness church can we cry glory to our savior this morning oh we thank you for the blood jesus we thank you for redemption we lift high your name above all names he is worthy 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 oh we join with all the angels we join with all creation sing worthy we exalt your name lord we exalt your name jesus you are faithful you are good we thank you jesus father we thank you god God, we thank you this morning. God, as we gather together as your church, as your bride, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the cross. We thank you, God, for redeeming us, for restoring us. you this morning, Father. I want to encourage you this morning that whatever you're facing, whatever you're walking through, the Lord is with you. He is our source. He is our strength. He's a very present help in time of need. The Lord is near. We rely upon you, God. We rely upon you, Jesus. We rest in you. We rest in you, Father. Father, I thank you, God, that you are in our midst. God, that you are speaking, that you are encouraging. Father, you are preparing us now for the word this morning. You are preparing our hearts. Whether you're online, whether you're in the room, God, we are ready to receive. We're ready to receive from you, Father. But you have your way in this place. But you have your way in this place. Father, we love you. We love you, Father. You're moving our midst this morning. You're moving in our midst this morning. God, I thank you that what you've started in these altars. God, you're going to continue. God, for the needs, God, that we're praying and believing over, you are doing miraculous things, God, even now. Even now, Father. God, I thank you for the testimony, God, that is coming out of this morning, that is starting this morning in this place, God. You're doing a new thing, Father. We believe that. We believe that. We believe that. Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you take the next couple minutes, get to know someone around you, greet them in the name of the Lord. Amen.
Good morning, Grace Community. Thank you so much for being here today. We are honored that you are with us, and I want to take the opportunity to share with you an amazing um, ministry opportunity that you have. There are uh, many ways to share the love of Jesus Christ, but one of the ways that we do that at Christmas time is with something just as simple as a Christmas stocking. The holidays are coming up, and it's crazy to think, but it's time to start thinking about Christmas. Maybe you were here last week and you saw the tables with stockings um, in the Connection Center. They are going to be there again when you leave today. So this is your second opportunity to participate in this awesome ministry. Um, there will be two tables with red and green stockings. Now, some of you already know what it's all about. You've done this for years. You're an expert. Some of you maybe have no idea what that is for. So that's why I'm here to tell you. Um, there are two ministries, one in Dallas and one in Fort Worth, um, Metro Ministries, that reach out to inner city kids. And they use these stockings as a tool. It, we talked, we sang about this morning that hope has a name and his name is Jesus. And the way that they can share that hope and share the love of Jesus is through giving these kids something tangible that they can hold on to that says, hey, someone loves me. Someone cared enough to make this gift and to give it to me. And that's what we're participating in. We're help, help putting this tool into the hands of these kids. And then also Dallas and Fort Worth Teen Life Challenge is for men and women who are going through difficult situations, but they're in a place where they can get their life turned back around. And this is, um, we also can give them stockings to say, hey, we're with you. We're supporting you. We believe in you. So when you leave, there will be stockings in the Connection Center. Grab some there will be information sheets as well to tell you all the things you need to know. On each stocking, there's a label, so you will see which stocking is for which group. And it's pretty simple. All you do is take the stocking home, fill it up with goodies, bring it back. Bring it back by November 20th. That's the day that it has to be here, so then we can get them ready to go and be delivered to the ministries. When you bring them back, you will take them to the reception room, which is just on the other side of the, the coffee bar. There will be a big table. You'll know where to put them when you walk into that room. So in advance, thank you. Thank you for participating and helping us um, share hope and share the love of Christ. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today at Grace Community. It is always great to see each and every one of you. So if you could, do me a quick favor, whether you're a guest, whether you come here all the time, could you t go ahead and take a minute to sign in? There's going to be a QR code in the seat pocket right in front of you. Take that, scan that, it'll take you to our online check-in, and just check in. If there's a prayer request that you have, feel free to include that in there as well. And if you're a guest, thank you for choosing to, to worship with us this morning. If you would, do us a huge favor. Uh, meet us after service at our little guest central area. There's a sign. You should be able to notice it. We have a free gift for you, and we just want you to know that we are so glad you're here. And if you're watching this online, always good to see you as well. Thank you for joining us. Do you all like my t-shirt? I think it's pretty fun. I didn't design it. Thank goodness you wouldn't want that. But Mia did, and she did an incredible job. And I know, and I know, and I know that you want one of these too, right? Yes. Many of you already received one from the Men's and Women's Kickoff a couple weeks ago. But if you have not yet, you can still get them. We have tons of new shirts right back here in our little T-shirt area. And we should have your size. If we don't have your size yet, we should get your size by Monday or Tuesday. So do me a favor. Be sure you stop by that t-shirt booth and purchase yourself a cool Stronger Together Grace Community t-shirt. You're going to be glad you did. It's super soft, super comfortable, and they look super great too. So the cost for our t-shirts is $5. Seven. Set. Wow. Seven. There we go. <laughs> Seven. Seven, thank you. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Seven. Seven dollars for the t-shirt. You can give online for that. You can scan that QR code at the t-shirt booth and scan it that way. Or you can just drop it in the offering and pick it up as we go. We're working on our kiosk. That should be ready to go by the next week or so, but it's not quite ready yet. So that's how you make that happen. All right. It is time to receive our Lord's tithes and offerings it is always a privilege to give, so our, our usher team, they're getting ready. Thank you so much for your continued faithfulness in your giving. 
you truly do give in a powerful way. And I know that your giving not only blesses Grace Community, but also blesses the kingdom of God worldwide. So thank you for your continuous giving. As they make their way and get ready, let's pray over our offering, and then we will receive that. God, we love you so much. We're so thankful to be in your presence today. We're so thankful that we have an opportunity to give to your kingdom. And I pray that as we do, uh, we give with a cheerful heart, that we give in spirit and in truth, that we give to honor you. Because ultimately, that's what we want to do with our life. We want to honor you in all we do. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. I'm Mia. Welcome to Grace. Thank you for joining us in service and online today. Grace Community is a family of believers seeking a full life in Christ. Our mission is to connect with others, develop our spiritual relationship with God, and advance His kingdom to our community and the world. Thank you for being a part of that mission. Don't forget to check in with us today. Whether you're a first-time guest or part of the Grace family, we want to know you're here. Be sure to scan the QR code in the bulletin or seat pocket or visit the Connect tab on our website. If you're new to Grace and would like more information, check yes on the guest card when you sign in. We also have a special gift for you that you can pick up at our guest center in the lobby following today's service. Three new classes for adults will begin this Wednesday for Grace Family Nights at 7 p.m. Here's a look at what's coming up. Hello, Grace. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Andre. Beginning October 19th, I'll be leading an eight-week study in the book of Hebrews. During the class, we'll talk about the supremacy of Christ. Not only that, but the whys behind it. Why is Jesus superior to angels, to Moses, to Abraham? We'll also talk about some of the exhortations from Jesus. We'll go into some promises as well. And when we get into chapter 11, the heroes of faith, we're going to make that personal. We might even shed a tear or two. Blessings, grace. Hope to see you there. Hey there, Grace. I'm Pastor Devin. My class will be starting a series called You and Me Forever, Marriage in Light of Eternity by Francis and Lisa Chan. In this series, we will take a look at what Scripture says to understand how we should view our most important earthly relationship. Marriage is all about focus. So often we focus too much on marriage that we forget to focus on God, making Him the centerpiece. Hello, my name is Terry North. And we are going to take a journey through First and Second Peter. Peter was the unofficial leader of the apostles. Every time the names of the apostles are listed in the gospels, Peter's name was mentioned first. Peter was part of the inner circle with James and John. When Peter met Jesus, his name was Simon. But Jesus changed his name to Peter, which means rock. And Jesus told Peter in Matthew 16, 18, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is the cornerstone. Peter is the rock upon which Jesus built his church. Hopefully, we will have a fun time addressing this study. Candy Palooza will be on Sunday, October 30th, immediately following the morning service in the parking lot behind the church stage. We will have a trunk or treat complete with candy and games at each car, along with inflatables as well. Candy Palooza will run from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and is for Grace families and their kids or grandkids. Grace kids will be encouraged to bring a friend that Sunday morning, and if you would like to decorate your car, please sign up on our website to let us know. We look forward to having fun with all of the Grace family at Candy Palooza. We are also still accepting candy donations for this event, and we need about 10 more bags of chocolate candy specifically. If you are able to, please bring your donation to the bin in the Connection Center. Thank you for helping make this event a success. It's that time of year. Stocking supporting Dallas Metro and Teen Life Challenge will be available in the Connection Center. Please pick up a couple to fill with candy, toys, and other treats. Please remember, this is the only Christmas gift most kids will be receiving. Thank you for blessing these ministries. We don't want you to miss out on any upcoming events, so be sure to visit our website at fmgrace.org, follow us on all your social media outlets at fmgrace.com, and keep up with us on our church app. Have a blessed week. Yeah, I got a text just now from Josh Shuck, so I'm going to tell you what Josh Shuck, wave at everybody, Josh Shuck. There he is right there on the fourth row. Josh, Josh uh, said that shirts were only $5 when Donald Trump was president. You see, you, see, you see what I got to deal with? I get texts. I'll be walking up to preach, and somebody will see me. I'll stop that, y'all. But that was good. 
That was good. I, I appreciate that. But you know what? Hey, it's God's perfect number, number seven, so, so be it. I'm glad that you're here today. I was wondering who was going to make it out in the rain, and I see the best of the best. They're here. They came out. Tell your neighbor you're the best of the best. And I see the Plunks are here. Richard and LaDonna, the chief, is here. Wait, stand up. We want to give you an ovation. Good to see you, doctor. You've been here a long time, you know who that is, but if you're brand new, this was our pastors that preceded us, and they were here 27 years, and now pastor serves as, continues to serve as our regional presbyter of the North Texas Assemblies of God. And the other day, he was telling me who all he's going to see and where he's preaching and everything he's doing. I said, you're busier now than ever, and he said, it's just a different kind of busy. So we love you, Richard and LaDonna. Five dollars. Okay, free t-shirts for everybody today. We're delighted to have you. Thanks for being here. If you're visiting today, we're really glad you're here. You know, it's been a good, good season. Uh, last week, some of you were not here. Six people gave their hearts to the Lord. It was a great, great day, and we're excited about that. And so... Our staff has just been praying that the Lord would continue to pour out His Spirit on all flesh in a way that has never happened, and we're starting to see it happen. So today, I want to speak to you about life. How's life treating you? Pretty good. Some are a mixed opinion. Some are thumbs up. Some are, eh, come see, come saw. Others are like, eh, don't ask that question right now. That's the title of my message today. But before we get into it, I want to show you a quick video I ran across this. It's 30 years old, so you'll have to excuse the quality of the video because this was long before we had high def, right? But it was such a funny video because in this movie, Billy Crystal was going to his son's uh, fifth grade class. It's career day. You know how you go and you talk about what your career is? But he was kind of down on his luck, so rather than talking about his job, he kind of talked about the aging process, and it was a very grim reminder. So let's watch this one-minute video, and then I'll talk to you about life. Value this time in your life, kids, because this is the time in your life when you still have your choices, and it goes by so fast. When you're a teenager, you think you can do anything, and you do. Your 20s are a blur. 30s... You raise your family, you make a little money, and you think to yourself, what happened to my 20s? 40s, you grow a little pot belly, you grow another chin. The music starts to get too loud. One of your old girlfriends from high school becomes a grandmother. 50s, you have a minor surgery. You'll call it a procedure, but it's a surgery. 60s, you'll have a major surgery. The music is still loud, but it doesn't matter because you can't hear it anyway. 70s, you and the wife retire to Fort Lauderdale. Start eating dinner at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You have lunch around 10, breakfast the night before. Spend most of your time wandering around malls looking for the ultimate soft yogurt and muttering, how come the kids don't call? How come the kids don't call? The 80s, you'll have a major stroke. You end up babbling to some Jamaican nurse who your wife can't stand, but who you call mama. Any questions? Any questions? I had to laugh at that because I will tell you that about four of the things he said I've already experienced. And in this movie, uh, it's only an hour and a half, and by the end of that movie, he's gone off to a dude ranch, and he finds happiness, and everything is all happy, cheerful. And, but it's not always that way in real life, is it? Sometimes it takes a little work to find fulfillment. So that's what we're going to talk about today. How's life treating you? When we talk about life, I want to get the, my thoughts from the person who created life, from the bread of life, who the one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So we're going to look at what Jesus had to say about life in a little bit. But I got to tell you, I've been thinking a lot about life lately because I know that in 14 months, I will be 60 years old. And it is, yeah, all the 60s are clapping. And all the 20s are going, oh my word, you're as old as dirt. No, listen, I've decided that it's very conceivable that in 10 years, I will be halfway through my life. And I got a lot of stuff I got to accomplish. 
So I've got to get busy, and I've got to get to work. But when we think about life, so many people find that they're looking for fulfillment in what kind of car they drive or what kind of house that they have or who they know or who they report to or what their job title is. And I will tell you, we know that does not bring fulfillment, does it? No. It's not even found in your entertainment. or who. In fact, I was reading this week about our 18th president, Ulysses S. Grant. And someone told President Grant, you're very stressed out. You need to take up golf. And like all the golfers are saying, yeah, right. Like that's going to relieve your stress. It's going to cause more stress. But President Grant decided he would take up golf. So while he was in Britain, he went to a golf course. And on the very first hole, he took his driver and he swung and he missed. And he swung and he missed again. He missed five times. And he handed the driver to his caddy. And he said, evidently, this is a fine game, but I see no use for the little white ball. (laughs) And he never played again. So I will tell you that if you're looking for fulfillment, even in golf, you're not going to find it. But where you will find fulfillment is in the words we're going to talk about today. Because what I have discovered in talking with people is sometimes people just don't have a clue to fulfillment of life. And they're looking for it by chasing after the little proverbial carrot. You know that carrot out there that says, oh, if I can just make it to vacation, it'll be good. Or if I can make it to the holidays. Or in some cases, if I can make it past the holidays. Or if I can make it to graduation. Or if I can get that job promotion. And I'm telling you, the only fulfillment in life comes from Jesus Christ. Turn with me to John 10. The Gospel of John, the 10th chapter in your Bibles or on your phones. Or for all you lazy bones, it will be right behind me on the scripture on the wall. I'm going to read today from the American, New American Standard. In fact, you know what? We haven't done this in a while. It's one verse. Let's stand and honor the reading of the Word. In fact, let's all read it together. Would you join me? Here we go. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now listen, this is Jesus talking, okay? And we know who the thief is, so let's dial in. Let's say it one more time. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Father, we ask that you would anoint the time. The Word's already anointed, but speak to us, God, and we will take this and be encouraged and challenged by it In the name of Jesus, and everyone said amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Now understand one thing. You have an adversary in life. It's the devil. You know that. We've talked about that. He is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. But remember, we talked about it last month. He's only like a lion, right? There's only one king of the jungle, and that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. In fact, Charlene told me last week or two weeks ago, that she had a picture of that lion and he was toothless. That roaring lion that was trying to roam about and see. See, the devil, he cannot devour you. But he will put things in your path to try to cause you to stumble. How many know that to be true? But I would remind you that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And no weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper. And anything that rises against you is going to fall But we need to understand we're in a fight. We're in a fight. I'm reminded of the story of a young man that was in in the army. And he was at boot camp. And he told his commanding uh, officer, he said, Sir, I, I need time off. I need a weekend pass. And he was denied. And he said, Sir, you don't understand. There, I've got, there's a wedding I need to be in. And the officer said, Sorry, I can't do that. And he finally said, sir, you don't understand. I'm in the wedding. And the commander said, no, son, you don't understand. You're in the United States Army. I want to remind you, you're in the army of the Lord. You have a call upon your life. And let me just let me remind you that Satan hates you. And it's not because 
I'm I'm on fire for God, or maybe I'm lukewarm. Maybe you're not even a believer in the room today. Satan still he hates you. You know why? Because you are created in the image of God. Now, some people mistakenly think that, well, if I could just somehow, somehow get through life and not be a threat to Satan, maybe I can skirt through and make it to the other side. That's not true. That's like a little child that covers his eyes and thinks that no one can see him because he can't see anyone else. No, Satan hates you if you're on fire or if you're lethargic. He hates you if you're not even a believer watching online today because you're in the image of God. You're made in that. And so we must understand that, that, that people that think that they, they can just skirt by by not being a threat, that's bad thinking. It's also bad theology if you go the other way and try to argue with Satan. You remember, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. You don't want to talk to him. You don't want to defend your faith. You don't want to try to reason with him. You rebuke him and move on. And the reason we do that is because Satan has a first language of lying. He is a liar. You remember Jesus said he's the author of all lies. He's he's the one. That's what he does. But he's bilingual, y'all. He's got a second language, and that's accusing. He's the accuser of the brethren. And he will tell you from time to time, you're not good enough. You're not holy enough. You ever, you ever heard that thought? You don't know the right people. You're not young enough. You're not old enough. You don't have the skills. You don't have the money. The devil is a liar, but he's also an accuser. So don't waste your time arguing with him. Rebuke him. Revelation says we are made overcomers by what? The word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. So plead the blood of Jesus and move on. But today, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the losing side. I want to talk about the winning side. And that's Jesus' side. It's important that you know you have a call of God upon your life. For it says in Jeremiah 1.5, Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. Isn't that good to know? So don't buy into phrases like, oh, he's born to lose. Or she'll never amount to anything. That's not true. For the psalmist said, I praise you in Psalm 139 because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are what? Wonderful. You know what that makes you? Wonderful. Because you're a work of God. Your work is wonderful, Lord. I know that full well. Tell your neighbor, you're special. You are special because you're made by God. And the Lord gives us many instructions in the Word of how to have a full life of abundance. So dial in with me, okay? Don't Hey, listen to your pastor right now. Don't be distracted. Don't look down at your phones. Listen, this is good for you, and you need to hear it. First and foremost, we need to hit the weights. Hit the weights. Develop spiritual discipline. Notice what Paul says in 1 Corinthians. So I run straight to the goal with purpose in every what? Some of y'all still not dialed in. Come on. Pay attention to me. Every step, I fight to win. I'm not just shadow boxing or playing around. Like an athlete, I punish my body, treating it roughly, training it to do what it should, not what it wants to. Did you catch that? Otherwise, I fear that after enlisting others for the race, I myself might be declared unfit and ordered to stand aside. Have you ever been around an athlete? I mean, we were hearing, Sonia was telling her story. Uh, She was in Barcelona doing the Ironman, and she finished fourth, y'all, fourth. And she would have been third, but she she twisted her ankle very badly, but she still finished. And she was telling us about how she overcame the, the, the pain, and man, that's discipline, just Discipline. I can't wait to hear the whole story, Sonia. We're so proud. We're going to have to change it to Iron Woman because you are, you are just way, way up there. But if you've ever been around a professional athlete, and you can tell very quickly. In fact, I had an opportunity several years ago to go feed the Dallas Cowboys. 
And here's how it went down. Uh, my friend uh, Andy managed a restaurant here in Highland Village, the McAllisters, and he, he told me, he said, sometimes we go after practice and we'll, we'll feed them. And if you ever want to go, and I said, count me in. So the next time he went, we went out there. And this was at the old facility in Irving before they built the, the big one, you know, in, in Frisco. They got their own cafeteria now, five-star chefs and everything. But back then, they would cater food. So we got in there, and he said, here's what I'm going to have you do. You get the easy job. He said, we got people that will do all the hot meals, the steak and the, the, you know, the fish and chicken and all that, but you're going to be at the sandwich bar. And all you got to do is just make sure there's bread, make sure there's lunch meat, and then you'll also have tea and water, fill the glasses. I, I can do that. Ice them up. And, oh, yeah, cookies. Cookies over here. That was my thing. All I got to do is make sure they got enough of those things. So sure enough, I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, off the practice field, they come. Here's the Dallas Cowboy. I met Jerry Jones. The coach at that time uh, was, uh, who was it, Red Ball? What do we call him? Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett, come over. I saw, I saw uh, uh, Romo was the quarterback. Saw um, DeAndre Ware. But they were all eating the hot food. And I'm standing over here by the cold sandwiches. And I'm like, somebody. And then it happened. Sean Lee, the middle linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, pro bowler Sean Lee, came straight toward me. And I'm telling you, Brian, he was ripped. Man, muscles, lean, no body fat. I'm telling you, it was like looking in a mirror when I... <laughs> I will tell you, I wasn't expecting that big a response. <laughs> but thank you. But this guy was, man, he was jacked up. And he was so nice. And he came over and, and I, I asked him, could I help you? And he said, do you have any five grain bread? Now, all I know is wheat and white in my house. But so I looked around. And I said, we do five grain bread. And he took that and he took the turkey meticulously. Like he was looking at the slices and he put two slices and I said, we got roast beef, we got a ham. And he goes, no, no, just the lean turkey's fine. Then he put a slice of tomato and a little bit of lettuce. And I said, do you want any mayonnaise or mustard? And he said, no, I can't have any condiments. I said, you want any potato chips? No, no potato chips, just I'll take a little fruit. And so he gets over to the drink, and I said, can I give you some, some tea or some lemonade? Just water, please, thanks. And so as we're watching, you see where we're going with this. I asked him, I said, I guess it's out of the question to ask you if you want a, a chocolate chip cookie. And he said, man, I would love to, but I can't. And off he went. Well, the very next person, this big, giant young man, probably 6'5", 350, I didn't know who he was. I found out later he's on the practice squad. And what the practice squad means, if you're not a football player, it's just like it sounds. They don't get paid the amount of the pros, but they're on the practice squad. And if someone gets hurt, or if they get their chance, maybe they'll get called up. This guy was about 350 pounds, and very in the middle, just very pudgy. Let's just say that, okay? And he came over, and he said, hey, man, give me a glass. And I said, okay. And so you've seen those big, uh, the really plastic mugs that Mac Allister's has, the big one. I started to put ice, and he said, no, no, no ice. And so I said, okay. So I give it to him, and y'all, he started stacking cookies in that <laughs> cup. On top, he must have had like 12 cookies. And the whole time he's looking over his shoulder like this. And he took a towel and he covered up those cookies. And he smiled real big and he said, I'm supposed to be on a diet, but I love cookies. And I told him, your secret is safe with me. And you know, preachers, there was a sermon right there. Because here's what I know. Both of those players had a certain amount of God-given talent. They would not be in that room if they didn't have talent. But the difference between the pro bowler and the practice squad was discipline. Oh, hear me. It wasn't just in what they ate, but it's the way they trained and the way they watched film and the way that they lifted weights. That's the difference. And I want you to know, in your spiritual walk, all of us have been given by God a measure of faith. Some will be in Hebrews Hall of Fame, and others will just continually try to get by. 
And I meet people all the time, and they say that very thing. And they know that they're saved, but they're not walking in the fullness of life. And what's the reason? Because they haven't learned the discipline, the discipline that is involved in being a saint of God. And I want you to know something. God's got promises for you, but if you never read the Word, you're never going to know them. So let me just give you a couple of things. First, you've got to immerse yourself in the Word. Yeah. Hebrews says, For the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This Word, it's living. But this is like weightlifting. It's a non-negotiable. you got to get the Word. you got to read the Word every day. And I tell people that are new to the faith, start with John. Read the Gospel. Read about it and then move on. You cannot forsake the Word. It's like weight lifting. The psalmist said, I've hidden that Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now another way that we know that you can grow in your muscle building, your discipline, is in suffering. Suffering. Now, nobody wants to suffer, do they? That's not very popular. You're not going to hear a lot of sermons about, let's go suffer. It's not fun. But we know that there's something that happens. The, because Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his, what? Sufferings. Being conformed to his death. Now, plenty of people want to know God and the glory of his resurrection. Yay, God! but they're not interested in the fellowship of his suffering. Now, I'm not telling you to go looking for pain, but I will tell you when you're in a season, when you're challenged, and you don't know anything except God is for me, that's enough. That's enough. And you'll find that when you get to the end of that journey, and you'll see that the Lord was faithful to you, that your history was his story, like that? I heard that this week. I said, I'm going to steal that. Your history is his story. And you'll look back and say, God brought me through. Your testimony will then be used to encourage someone down the road that's going through the very same thing. So I want to encourage you today. Don't, don't begrudge the suffering. Because in that suffering, it can be the sweetest of time. Remember that faith that is not tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. I say that again. Faith that's not tested is faith that cannot be trusted. Next, to be one of a strength in your muscles, you need to share your faith. Share your faith. Every opportunity. 1 Peter 3.15 Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope has a name. Oh, we sang about it this morning. That hope that you have, always be prepared to give an answer because your spiritual strength will increase when you share your story with somebody else. It may be somebody at work or at school. It may be someone in your family. But if you will open up and just say, I don't know, I'm not a pastor, but I will tell you that here's what God did for me. You'll be amazed of how the Holy Spirit will take that and make it fruitful fruitful. Now we learned a lesson a couple of years ago at our house, the Howards, about fruitfulness because our neighbor planted a watermelon vine on the other side of the fence. And guess what happened? It came, snuck it in to share your faith. You may think, I don't know who's going to be blessed by this. You'll be amazed how many people will be changed. I heard a story the other day, well actually it was several years ago, at General Council and it was a pastor that was preaching, and I wish I could remember his name, Dustin. You, you may have been there. But this pastor was telling us that 15 years earlier, he was a drug addict. He said, y'all wouldn't have known me. In fact, one night changed my life. He said, I got shot in a drug deal in the head, and I was bleeding out. He said, I very well could have died that night, but the EMT in the, in the ambulance... He told me, he said, son, I don't think you're going to make it. Do you know Jesus? 
And he began to share the faith. And at the end of that ride, as he's working on him, he's praying over him, and he led him in the sinner's prayer. And that young man, he didn't die that night. He got better. And three weeks later, that EMT came by and saw him. And they got him into life challenge. And he was saved, delivered, and healed from drugs. And now he's a pastor speaking at general councils of the Assemblies of God. Don't tell me that God doesn't save, deliver, and heal. But it takes somebody that's willing to be vulnerable enough to say, I want to tell you about Jesus. And when you do that, that's another way of flexing your muscle. Oh, i got to be quicker. The second thing. Not only do we got to have uh, uh, weightlifting, but we got we to gotta say, don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Some of y'all are so young, you don't remember that song. But man, 25 years ago, it was very popular. Don't worry, be happy. And I found myself in the grocery store a little while ago. And they were playing that song on music, on the speakers. And I was just whistling along. It's so catchy. Don't worry. Be happy. And it got me to thinking about this promise where Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, they do not reap, they don't store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I wish y'all could have seen me that day pushing those carts, Sharon. I got happy, and I started filling up everything. That looks good. I could use some of that and that too. And by the time I got to the end, Josh, I had two carts full of groceries. And I got home and Kara said, what's wrong with you? You got three boxes of ding-dongs? What is your problem? And I said, I'm not a Dallas cowboy. I'm not in training. Don't worry. Be happy. Let me tell you something. The enemy will try to get you to worry and be fearful. And much of that worry will never even happen. Don't be anxious. Jesus goes even further in verse 31. Do not worry then saying, what will we eat or drink? What will we wear? The Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows the need that you have. But seek first his kingdom. And his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Don't worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will care for itself. So if you're needing abundance in your life. Remember. Don't be anxious. I know what the news says. I know about the economy. I know about the border. I know that they're saying. Oh there could be a a nuclear war. All these things. Remember this, Jesus said, cast all your cares on me and I will care for you. That's scriptural. Don't worry, be happy. And finally, if you want to have supernatural life, love big. How big? This big. When my son Ethan was little, you won't remember this because you're like two years old. I don't think you'll remember. But he would walk in and I'd go, Ethan, I love you. You know how much? This much? No, Daddy. This much? No. This much! And so Ethan would come in and say, Daddy, I love you this much! And man, that just warmed my heart. Like any dad, you want your kid to know, I love you this much. And I want you to know something today. Your God, your Heavenly Father, He loves you this much. He's for you. He's not against you. You've heard us sing about it today. So I want to reinforce it before we go home. Somebody needs to hear God loves you. He loves you big. This big. It says in John 15, 11, These things I've spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. But then... In 1 Corinthians, it goes a little farther and talks about love. He said, if I speak with the tongue of men and angels, but I do not have love, 
I've become as a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. A noisy gong. Do you know at the time of that writing what that meant? Back in the first century, those that worshipped pagan gods, they would go to their temple and there was a big gong and they would take a mallet and they would hit that gong so that they could awaken those gods. So when these people read that, they knew what that meant. If I don't have love, it doesn't matter how much spiritual gifting I have because it's almost as if I'm trying to awaken a pagan god. Wow, that's powerful. He goes on. In the next verse, he says, If I have the gift of prophecy, and I know all mysteries and all knowledge, but do not have love, I am nothing. Love's even more important than knowledge. I was reading about a, a man by the name of Doug Nichols, and he was a, a missionary in India. And he went to India, and he got very sick. He got tuberculosis, and all of a sudden now he's in a hospital. He's in this sanitarium. And he said, God, I was called here to do missions, but now I'm in this hospital. And God said, right here will be your mission field. And so he began to try to reach people and witness to them, and nobody would listen. But finally one night, he heard a man that was crying out, and he needed to go to the bathroom, but no nurse would come to help him. So he got out of his bed, and he went, and he found that man, and he lifted him up, and he carried him to the bathroom. And the next day, that man became his first convert. You see, you've heard me say it many times before. People don't care how much you know. They want to know how much you care. And when you go the extra mile, I don't know what it is, but maybe this week you're going to have an opportunity to do something for somebody that you didn't have to do. And it's going to open up a door. And it happens with love. It goes further. The next verse said, If I have all faith as to remove mountains, but I don't have love, I have nothing. Even faith without love is corrupted. The good Samaritan, the Levite, the priest, they all had faith, but only one acted in love. Let's be people of love. Verse 3, if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, but I do not have love, mm, it profits me nothing. And he goes on to the next and says, if I give my body as an offering to be burned, but I gain nothing if I do not have love. So what am I telling you today? Love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love people. See the best in people. Love them. Love them. Love them big. Love them big. I want to leave you with this story before we go home. And worship team, you go ahead and come back up. In World War II, it was the height of the war. And in the middle of that war, there were two little boys, actually a boy and a girl, Sebastian, who was seven years old, and Sophia, who was five years old. They were orphans, and they lived in an orphanage. And in the middle of that war, something tragic happened, and a bomb hit that orphanage. And both little Sebastian and Sophia were injured. They both took them to the hospital. They were both in the hospital, and Sebastian had non-life-threatening injuries. But his little sister, Sophia, was gravely, gravely hurt. So the nurse came to little Sebastian and she said, if we don't get her some blood, she may die. But she said, Sebastian, you have her blood type and you can save her. So here's what we will do. We will do what's called a blood transfusion. And we will take your blood and give it to your sister and she will be saved. And without thinking about it, little Sebastian said, yes, let's do that. And so immediately they came and they started the process. And he felt the pinch in his arm as they put the needle in. And he could see the tube full of his blood as it was leaving his body. And it was filling up this glass container. And when it got full, they rushed over to the room beside him. And they began to give that blood to little Sophia. And in a little bit, Sophia was wheeled in beside him. And she already looked better. Her ashen face was now pink. She was doing better. She even woke up and looked over at her big brother and smiled. When she went back to sleep, little Sebastian, hear this, he called the nurse over. 
and the nurse bent down beside him and he asked her, will it hurt when I start to die? Tears formed in her eyes because she realized that Sebastian didn't realize that he was just giving a little of his blood. But he was willing to give all of his blood to save the life of his little sister. Jesus said, there's no greater love no greater love has any person than he who is willing to lay down his life for his friends. I want you to know today, whether you're watching online or you're here in this room, that Jesus Christ loves you this much. That he extended his hands and he took death on a cross and he died for you. But he didn't stay in the tomb because on the third day he rose from the dead. And because of that, we have eternal, everlasting life. The greater prize is going to be on the other side. But for now, but for now, you can have fullness of life. The way we do that, we hit those weights. We develop our discipline through reading of the Word, through prayer, through service, even when it hurts, even when it's painful. We don't worry. We remain happy. We think ourselves happy, as the Apostle Paul said, because if God's going to take care of the birds, He's sure going to take care of you. And finally, we love big, knowing that our joy is made full and we live in abundance. Father, I thank You for Your Word today. I thank You, Lord, that You are with us. As has been said over and over, You're not against us. You are for us today. And it is Your desire that we have everlasting life. But until that time, we need you to manifest a fullness and abundance that we're promised right here on this side, even in the middle of this thing that we call life. So would you speak to us today? May we respond in accord, Lord, of saying in whatever way that you're asking, I purpose to just do a little better. If it means reading the Word more, or if it means serving more, maybe it means just going through the battles and knowing I'm not alone even in suffering or maybe I just need to love more speak to our hearts now would you stand all around the building this morning when I was praying the Lord impressed upon me to close the service this way he said take a look inside and ask yourself How's life treating you? Do you have that abundance? Or do you find yourself just trying to get by? And if it's the latter, simply say, I'm available for you. I will be your source. But you got to meet me halfway. So if that's you, I want to pray for you. If there's anybody in the room that say, Jamie, I just need a little oomph. I need a little more of zest in life. Would you pray for me? You lift your hand. I want you to. Yeah, I see. Sure, yeah. All around the room. Sure. Let's pray then. Lord, for all of these needs, for all of these who are going through this walk that we call humanity, Lord, would you speak to us? Would you, uh, would you empower us today? Would this word would it be refreshing to our spirit? Would we receive it and not get bound in, in the traditional sense, Lord, of work and doing what we have to do? But Lord, would you make it fresh? Would you make every day count for us today? I pray that you would speak to those, God, who need a special touch from you. Let your spirit inhabit them. Let them feel your presence and remind them that you are for us. You're not against us. You're on our side. You're fighting our battles. So as we leave this place, God, later, I pray that you would make your inhabitants in us. And we purpose, we will discipline ourselves more. We will read the Word. We will study, God. We will find joy even in the suffering. And we will share our faith. And out of that, Lord, will come the abundance of life. I give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing that chorus again. Hope has a name. Sing it out. Cause hope has a name. His name is Jesus. My Savior's cross. I set the sinner free. Hope has a name. His name is Jesus. Be praised. I have lift your hand one more time. 
His ways are best for our lives. And I think you would agree to. At this time, let's pray, then we'll be dismissed. God, we love you so much. We're so thankful to be in your presence today. We're so thankful for the blessings. God, if you'll take care of the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, how much more will you take care of us? God, you love us. And we, we say we love you too, God. You're our everything. You are our Savior. You are our Lord. And we say thank you for all that you do in our life. God, the blessings you give. God, you're such a great God. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all go, go with God. We love you. We will see you soon.